Hi everybody, Mike Iskovitz here. I wanted to talk to you about a couple of terms that are going around uh, that a lot of people may be hearing for the first time and are becoming very suspicious of. And I wanna explain what they mean and also why I don't blame you for being suspicious. And those two terms are cloud seeding and geoengineering. So let's start out really quickly with geoengineering. That one I think is easier to explain. Geo means earth. And like geography and geology, right? Geoengineering. And we know what engineering is. Engineering is designing and building things. So in this case, geoengineering is modifying the earth, right? Or building something on the earth. And I'll give you a couple of really quick, easy examples. Building a dam on a river is a type of geoengineering. We're changing the earth, right? There used to be a river that flowed through here. We wanted to create a reservoir for drinking water and for recreation. And so you build a dam, and maybe you use that dam for hydroelectric power, or, or maybe you don't, but either way, you've put a blockage on the river, you've created a lake that wasn't there before, that's geoengineering, all right? Another example is, let's say we have a uh, port, and we have ships going in and out of this port, and we wanna make sure that the, the um, dredging that we've done to allow the ships to come in doesn't fill up with sand. And so we build jetties on the beach, which are these strips of either, either built out of concrete or rock that prevents the sand from flowing down the coastline. That's another type of geoengineering. We're interfering with a natural process, right? And I don't think that anybody really has a problem with that. I think most people accept that we can create a lake by putting a dam on a river, or we can create a port and allow shipping in and out by blocking sand and things like that. Those are both types of geoengineering. But I know that the talk now is geoengineering with regard to what could have caused the awful catastrophic flooding that is taking place in Texas and also in New Mexico and among other spots, the Carolinas as well. And that comes down to what is called cloud seeding. So that's seeding like planting seeds. What in the world is happening with this? Well, cloud seeding has to do with the fact that water droplets or ice crystals need something to form onto. And I want you to think about maybe if you were taking a steamy shower. When you're done, the walls of the bathroom are wet. Maybe the, the mirror is fogged up, okay? So the um, humid air, the humidity in the air didn't just form into raindrops in your bathroom, right? It attached itself onto the mirror. So. Ice, when ice forms and when water droplets form, like cloud droplets, they need to form onto something. So those are called condensation nuclei or a condensation nucleus. Now they are natural in the atmosphere everywhere. And they could be things like pollen can be a condensation nucleus. Um, sea salt, like microscopic sea salt, like spray that comes off of the ocean. It could be dust. Uh, it could be any of a variety of things. In the case of cloud seeding, what scientists learned in the early part of the 20th century is that you can create drops if you put something in there to act as a uh, condensation nucleus. And they learned that things like salt will work, dry ice works, and another substance that works is silver iodide, which is a chemical that has a structure that the water likes to glom onto or ice can accrete to. So what do we do? The United States government ran uh, experiments in the middle 1940s in the post-World War II era where they tried to drop these substances into clouds to see if they could make it rain. The bottom line is their experiments showed that given perfect circumstances, not every time, but if there was a saturated layer of the atmosphere and conditions were just right, they could increase the output of a cloud from what it would normally have rained to about 10% more. So remember, the key that I said there is it was already going to rain, right? But they increased the yield by let's say 10%, percent five, 10, maybe 15%. What they didn't do was to cause a normal rain cloud to turn into a flash flood. Now let's fast forward to today. Did you know it is true that there are private companies that are in the business of cloud seeding. One of those private companies was operating here in Texas. It's called Rainmaker Industries. And they actually sell their services. 
Uh, for example, if you were a farmer and you owned a huge plot of land and instead of irrigating, you wanted to see if you could increase rain, well, you can pay them and they will fly drones into a cloud or into a, a group of clouds, try to get that to precipitate out more rain. Rain that would have fallen anyway, all right? But they're trying to make it rain a little bit more, maybe 10%. Or maybe 15%, or in the best possible circumstances, maybe 20% more. So instead of getting an inch of rain, you might get 1.15 inches of rain. Okay? We're talking about small scale stuff. These are drones that go up to about 7,000 feet, I think, a few thousand feet above the ground, maybe it's 10,000. And they release this aerosol into the cloud to try to get more drops to form or to try to get ice crystals to form. Remember, we're talking about a small area and a yield of about 15%. The floods that happened in Texas happened in an area near where spraying was done the previous day by this company that I mentioned. I understand 100% the suspicion. I understand that it's scary that a business was spraying cloud condensation nuclei, okay, into a cloud, and then 24 hours later, or maybe it was 36 hours later, you have this colossal downpour. But I want you to stay with me here. There was already a tropical storm that had made landfall in Mexico the previous Friday. The moisture from that tropical storm moved up into Texas. It was going to rain, regardless of anybody who was spraying anything there was a threat for heavy rain across the area. Anything that would have been released from a drone or a plane would have long since dissipated by the time those rains started in Kerr County. Long since dissipated. They only last in the air for maybe an hour, and then by then they're gonna mix in with the cloud and they're going to rain out. There's no amount that you could be able to put in the sky that would cause what happened in Texas. Um, it's been demonstrated over and over and over again, and in fact, if that company could produce rain like that, believe me, they would be making a lot more money. They'd be like NVIDIA or Google because they would have the power to create this rain wherever you needed it. And that's not what they do. So they're talking about just increasing it a little bit. So you're going to see a lot of discussion online about cloud seeding. And I just want you to know that it is a small scale technology. It really has limited proof that it does anything significant. It is only going to work on rain clouds that are already forming. No amount of cloud seeding is going to create rain from nothing. There's no water there, there's no humidity there. So I want you to, I would just suggest, you can do whatever you want, but we need to look at everything and try to figure out what source this is coming from. So just imagine you have all of the meteorologists and atmospheric scientists at Texas A&M University, at the University of Houston, at Texas Tech, at Oklahoma, at Florida State, at Penn State. You pick the school. You've got atmospheric scientists, people who have dedicated their life to studying the atmosphere all over the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America, all around the world. And they will all tell you that cloud seeding does not have the capability to do the type of damage and flooding that was done in Texas or anywhere else. It's not physically possible, okay? Or you can believe some guy on TikTok or on Instagram. And I think it's best for everybody if we try to trust the experts on this, the physicists, the, che the chemical, uh, the chemists, the meteorologists, the atmospheric scientists that this just simply could not have been caused by seeding clouds with a drone. So thank you for watching this explanation. I understand completely the suspicion, but I think if we educate ourselves more, we could focus more on what needs to be done, which is better warning systems to make sure that nothing like this terrible tragedy ever happens again. Thanks for watching.